Hi, my name is Nancy from St. Paul, Minnesota. Today is the end of January, so I decided to give you a tour of the plants that I have growing inside my house. I will also show you my new house plant collection, from which I will tell you about 12 that are hard to kill house plants for beginners. I will actually number them so not to confuse them with the other house plants that I bought, but that require a little more maintenance. Let me show you. Actually, before I start the tour, I just want to mention that I have a combination of annual plants that I brought inside this past October, and I'm treating as house plants right now, and um, true house plants per se. We will start with the geranium or pelargonium that I brought inside this past October. This is one of them. And then this is the um, ginseng ficus bonsai plant. This is an easy or hard to kill house plant. It is native of Southeast Asia. This plant can survive drought conditions. So if you forget to water, uh, it will be okay. But just remember to water as soon as you notice. And, and actually, you can water whenever the soil gets slightly dry. It needs also a good amount of sunlight. The next plant that is easy or hard to kill house plant is called Syngonium white butterfly or arrowhead plant. This is an original of South America. It can grow in low to medium light or indirect sunlight. Look at those leaves. Aren't they beautiful? They remind me of the caladiums that you can grow out, outside in the summer. Um, you have to allow the plant to dry out partially between watering. And next is my coleus. These are cuttings that I um, did in past October. This is the red Kong coleus cuttings, and this is the copperhead uh, coleus cuttings. Aren't they beautiful? These are my paper whites that are done blooming. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to cut the flowers yet, so hopefully I will get them pretty soon. Now this plant, look at those leaves. Not good, right? But look at these new ones. Beautiful. So let me tell you, this is what happened with this plant. I bought this plant along with two other plants, the Schifflera and the Mon Monstera online um, and back in December. And silly me, I didn't think about the weather. Of course not, right? I just wanted to plant shop. So I, this one actually got delivered when it was negative 10. So imagine that. And it was left in my mailbox. So when I opened the box, I expected the worst. But luckily, this one survived along with the Schifflera. So the name of this one is Fatsia japonica spider's web. The next plant that is easy or hard to kill is a very common one and is the aloe vera. This plant is a low maintenance succulent. It needs plenty of sun throughout the day and water sparingly about three to four weeks. It does tolerate partial shade in the late afternoon. This coleus is called copperhead. You can see the leaves here are more yellowish and don't have a lot of the dark color that is usually the color of the coleus like I will show you over here, and that is due to the sun. This one gets more sun than the other side. And this is my pepper plant. Actually, this is my banana pepper. And next is another coleus. And this one, again, is darker in color, usually with more sun, like I show you here in the tag. This one is called flamethrower sriracha but because it's not getting enough uh, sunlight is more um, yellowish next is another geranium the next easy or hard to kill plant is also a very common one and it's, it's the spider plant this plant prefers to grow in light shade or bright indirect sunlight and it only needs to be water when the top of the soil feels dry. And actually, I had this plant years ago. It's actually one of my first ones. 
And sometimes I forgot to water. And it did okay once I remembered to water. So I recommend that. Next is my new favorite house plant, and it is the snake plant. This is an evergreen perennial that needs bright, indirect sunlight. The leaves are stiff, broad, and upright. Uh, you have to allow the soil to dry be in between waterings, and it can go up to three weeks without water. Think about that. This plant is an annual that I brought inside. And the name of this one is, I think it's guacamole. But let's look at the tag. It's Fancifilers guacamole oplectranthus. Um, and this is a beautiful plant. Uh, the leaves are a little thick. But look at the color. Um, it's just beautiful. Love it. Next is this beautiful coleus called Red Kong Coleus. This is uh, the plant where I got my cuttings on the part that I show you at the beginning. And next is the, um, this one is called Chocolate Mint Coleus. Uh, beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Very pretty. And I have another uh, cut in here from the copperhead coleus. Now this one is my Calibracoa uh, Double Twilight. Look at those blooms. I love this plant too. This one I didn't trim and another one that I trim actually did not make it. This one is another annual. It's um I gotta find the tag for the name. Let me see. This one is called Mwalembekia Small Leaf. Is that how you say it? Still doing good. More annual plants that I will show you. This is uh Pelargonium called Occult Shield, and look at those leaves. Even if you don't like the flowers, the, the leaves are just beautiful. Uh, and then another one, it's this um, African Flux that I remember. This is my new favorite uh, annual, and it's called Safari Sky. It's beautiful too. More geraniums, and then this next plant is actually a perennial that I bought by mistake, thinking it was zone four, but it's zone five. So I have to keep it in a pot inside. And the name is the Muktenia. There's some that are for zone four, but this one is actually for zone five. Still pretty. This sonal geranium or uh, pelargonium is called Vancouver Centennial. Look at those leaves. The ones that are closer to the to the sunlight are darker compared to the ones in the back. And the leaves are also unique. That's where I got them. I don't care much about the flowers, like the leaves. Look at them. And now on this side, they're more yellowish. Now let's talk about the African violets. These plants do best in bright, indirect light with regular house temperature. They are generally easy to care for, but can go, can go through fussy spells. So that's why it's not on my list. This plant is an alocasia, and it likes soil that is moist but not wet. And this one is called uh, Dwarf Amazonica Elephant Ear. Uh, its common problem is overwatering or underwatering, and it needs frequent uh, misting as well. Now, this one is uh, an amaryllis, 
This one is called Minerva. And this other one is the Red Lion, the very common amaryllis. And they are just blooming. I have other ones that are not blooming yet. Like this one here. Uh, this one is the Magilla or Gorilla. Another cuttings. Another Amaryllis. This geranium or pelargonium is called Wilhelm Langut. I think that's how you call it. Again, the, the leaves are unique. And I think the flowers are red. And this next one is an annual. And it's the tricolor stage or salvia tricolor. More geraniums. Um, one thing I want to tell you is geraniums are actually one of the easiest um, plants to bring inside and treat it as house plants. Uh, this next easy or hard to kill house plant is the pulses or golden pulses. This is the golden pulses. This is one of the most popular hanging plants. It has yellow and green leaves. It will grow aggressively with minimum care. It can easily root in a glass of water. They like medium to bright indirect sunlight. Allow top inch of soil to dry before watering again. More geraniums. This is the Peperomia quadrangularis or beetle Peperomia. This plant prefers medium to bright indirect light but can tolerate low indirect light. It has a forgiving nature and lack of maintenance. You have to allow the soil to dry out in between watering. This next plant is my chenille plant. This is another annual and I just want to show you this one was done blooming and I have a little bud here that I will try to show you. And this plant actually likes a lot of water. And I have to water constantly. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, actually most um, annuals inside require more water than the other house plants. Just an FYI there. I just want to show you a little other bud that is about to flower. Number eight of the easy or hard to kill house plants are the bromeliads. They belong to the pineapple family. They like bright indirect light. They are tough care free house plants. You have to water only when the soil is dry. And this plant has been done blooming. So I had to remove the dead bloom. This plant is the Schifflera trinet or umbrella tree plant. This one prefers at least four hours of bright indirect light, but can survive in medium light. Also prefers temperatures of 60 to 75 degrees. You have to water when the topsoil is dry. Even though it's an easy plant to grow, it does require some care. And this one, it's the, um, if you overwater, the leaves turn this color and they fall. So I think this is the mistake I did. I was overwatering this plant. So that's why I'm not including this on my list. The next plant on my list is the Monstera Deliciosa or Swiss cheese plant. This plant likes bright indirect light, but you have to avoid direct sunlight. You have to water only when the topsoil is almost completely dry. Sometimes you have to miss the leaves occasionally and keep them free of dust. The Calathea or rattlesnake plant is a tropical evergreen native of Brazil. It has a distinctive foliage with wavy pattern. They are not considered the best option for beginners because they have a particular requirements to grow. This is an orchid plant. This one prefers indirect sunlight. 
These plants are easier to grow than you might think, but require the right conditions and maintenance. You have to allow growing medium to dry out between waterings. They prefer temperatures of 50 to 90 degrees. Don't place this plant where it will experience cold drafts or direct sunlight. Next, I will show you my poncetta plant. This plant is actually my husband's because he's the one who waters it and it's still blooming. And this is, you guys, is my peony. I'm growing inside. Look, it's gonna bloom pretty soon, hopefully. I'm not sure when it's gonna bloom, but look at the bud. I have three peonies there. And this is my amaryllis section here. I have some paper whites that I bought on sale that are growing. And this is my amadeus. Uh, you can see a little pink border, barely see it though. It's almost done blooming. This one is not blooming yet, and this is the Monte Carlo Amarillos. And it's almost done blooming. And then this one is the Apple Blossom that just started blooming last week, actually, or a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's all the ones that are not the movie. Okay, now this one is the other that I was talking about that I got it on the mail and it was almost dead. Look, it's coming back. So excited. And it's the... Okay, now this one is an another aloe vera. I have more lilies growing here. Now these ones are my uh, citronella plants. I have three. And this, I have two pepper plants. One and two here. Now I will show you my herbs. And this one is the English thyme. Then we're gonna have the rosemary. And this other one was the Greek basil, columnar Greek basil that just died. So that's okay. I can buy more. And this last herb, but not least, is the Greek oregano. Now uh, I'm going to go upstairs to check out my other houseplants. I have more bromeliads up here. One fact about bromelias is that they only bloom once, but I still like how the foliage looks like. This next plant is called Kalankoe blossfieldiana or Flaming Katie. This is a succulent that produces copious flowers that bloom for months. It needs bright, indirect sunlight. It can tolerate one to two hours of direct sunlight. It needs more water when blooming but check every day to see if it needs water. Now, this next plant is called Croton Petra or Joseph's Coat. It likes bright, indirect light. Let it dry out entirely between waterings. It loves humidity, so mist weekly. Keep away from draft so-called areas. This is Hoya Carnosa. It prefers medium to bright, indirect light. Some do well with two hours of direct sunlight in the evening. Water every three to four weeks. And then I have my Magilla, a baby Magilla and a baby aloe vera. Tell me which houseplant I should add to my collection. 
or which ones are your favorite ones. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.